Hello, everybody. This is Alan Fine. I'm here today with Jacqueline Leibel Cote, the president of Colette, whom we spoke to back in June. And I feel like back in June, we were so naive about this coronavirus epidemic. <laughs> and now we know so much more. Uh, and we will know so much more in the future. But in the meantime, let's find out what's going on with Colette and more on Insider Travel Report. Jacqueline, hi. Hi, Alan. Great to see you. Great to see you, too. So uh, where do we begin? I, I, do you have a, do you, you have a spot? Well, I'll start. How are bookings? <laughs> <laughs> Um, forward bookings into mid-2021 are looking really strong. Um, you know, we're seeing activity on the website, definitely seeing activity coming through, um, but definitely from May onward um, and definitely pushing into the, the latter half of the year, which is, which is good. I think that's also showing that people are optimistic that they will and want to travel. They just want to make sure that we sort of get through that, that first part of the year. And are these new bookings or are these rebookings? Both? <laughs> Still both, um, but we a lot of it is new bookings. So that's also a very positive trend because we are still not spending much from the marketing side of things, but, um, you know, really sort of looking at what's new coming through. And, you know, you're seeing some of the top destinations that we're selling right now that are, are booking are your Italy's, they're your Iceland's. You're seeing Japan in the top, you know, tours of places people want to go, um, which was, you know, a trend that you saw prior to COVID, but you're still seeing people want some of those long haul destinations still. And they're, they're just hopeful that when travel's back, that they're going to go. You have uh, let's talk about your cancellation policy. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you and I, I think have talked about this before and, you know, one of the things we didn't have to do was um, we didn't have to change or modify our cancellation or our waiver policy at all throughout all of this. Um, and, you know, our model and our, our philosophy is that um, our, the money that, you know, it's, it's our guests money. And so, um, you know, but, also, there are, you know, we want to be able to make sure that they have a, a good experience when they're working with Colette, that um, when they're comfortable to travel, that they can. But we have a cancel up for it. Uh, up, I can't even talk now. Um, we have a cancel up to 24 hours prior to departure, um, you know, waiver policy, which is, you know, that, that leaves some sense of um, security and comfort for people. And you've refunded so much money. You want to talk about that for a moment? Yeah, I mean, look, these aren't times that you, you know, it's, but we are financially stable as an organization. To date, we've refunded over $115 million. Um, so obviously, like I, we've talked about before, a lot of the, a lot of the reservations and a lot of the bookings that we had for 2020, many people moved into 2021, um, knowing that they, that they did want to travel. But for those people who were unsure, or just wanted to sort of wait until there's more certainty in the world, um, you know, we, we refunded that money and we're hoping that we made it, um, easy to work with us and um, that they'll come back to, um, to the travel agent that they booked through and back to Colette and on one of our tour products because um, in the end, like we said, it's their money and uh, it's not fair for us to hold on to what is rightfully theirs. But, but another pivot that you made with COVID was you, you thought about the travel advisor and since that's our or key audience, that is our audience, uh, yep. the advanced commission program. Talk yep. about that, please. Yeah, no, I mean, so, you know, we, we've surveyed back in the early part of the summer, we had surveyed out to the travel agent community. And one of the things, obviously, this has been a devastating and just tragic, um, you know, year for the travel industry just as a whole. Um, I would say we of all industries have been just beyond decimated throughout all of this with borders continuing to remain closed. But one of the things that we, that we heard from um, travel agents in that survey is um, wanting that protection on the commission. Um, so one of the things that we created and started and launched um, from that feedback from the travel agents was the um, upon deposit. So it's the advanced commission program. So upon deposit of any of the collect bookings that they, that they um, 
their guests are traveling on, they will receive a portion of their commission upon deposit. So really what we're looking to do is be able to support the travel agents who are, who are struggling through all of this. And that's, that's all of them. Um, uh, just like all of the tour companies and tour operators, I mean, we're all in this uh, and all of the suppliers across the globe. And so how we can help to try to think of the future and support for what that looks like um, was really, was really our approach in all of this. And, um, you know, we're not, we're, we do not recall. Um, so if a, a cancel, if a booking um, with a deposit down is then canceled, we're not going back and asking for a recall of that commission. Um, it's really the purpose of the program is to make sure that we're supporting the travel agents through what is definitely the most difficult time. But now as people are booking into 21, it, it's a long time to wait. And it, so the advanced commission is gradated based on the type of booking? Yeah. So basically, it's you could have a land only, um, a land and air only, uh, and a land air with the Colette's travel protection. So it's $100 per booking for a land only booking. Uh, it's $125 for a land and air booking. And it's $200 for a land for any bookings that include the travel protections. Uh, so Colette's travel protection program. So that's how um, that's the commission flat amount that would go to the agents based on how the guests book. Hey, any amount helps, and it's really, really kind of you to do that. Uh, going back to the bookings that are, uh, we were talking about 2021, uh, any, any uh, diehards 2020s, is domestic travel happening? Yes, so we, um, I, probably when we talked back in June, I was saying we were looking to have our July 3rd departure. So we have had domestic products, mainly national parks, Southern Charms, you know, th those regions. Um, so we have had some, we've had many tours, not many, not in this year, I guess. Well, you had the we've South had, Dakota one. Yes, yeah, South Dakota. Um, that was the first one, the spotlight on South Dakota, but that was July 3rd. So we have had quite a few tours at low, you know, lower numbers. So anywhere between nine to the max of, you know, 20 or so, which would be half of a bus. Um, but yeah, so what happens is we make the tour operational and at that point, people then pay the final payment. So that was how we sort of changed our typical policy for when final payment would do, would be due was once we made it operational. So those people are paying um, as soon as we make it operational. And we actually had a, we had two ladies who had traveled with us. They loved being on the road with us and they loved being back out traveling and thought, wow, this is the best time to sort of be doing this because there, it, you know, when you, it, it's not as busy. So um, they actually had booked another tour for the fall. So they actually have traveled twice um, just since we've been operating in July on our tour products because they felt safe. They thought that the measures that we were taking as a company were, you know, they made them feel comfortable. They made them feel like they, you know, could go out and travel in a very safe way. Um, and they trusted us and to be able to do that. So they've actually, we've had people come back with us. So yeah. Been well, that, no, that's a great sign. So what is it exactly that they're seeing? Like if they were to speak and say, Hey, I like this be safe because I saw this or this, what were the pivots you made on the tours? Yeah, just having people wear the masks on the coach um, and in, you know, when and where needed, if they're on their own walking through Mount Rushmore or wherever they might be, and they're with whoever they've been with during this, you know, this time, um, and they want to take their masks off and take a picture and do all that, they can do that. But the fact that we're having people wear their face masks when we're around the whole group and, you know, following all the proper protocols, um, that they're feeling safe about having hand sanitizer readily available throughout the entire day. Um, so it's those sorts of things. And then what our suppliers and what our partners are doing, the hotels and all the restaurants and everything and where they're going, they're and you're feeling- you're hand picking those, making sure that they're in compliance with what you're your values are. Yep, for sure. Yep. And if that, if anything were um, of a difference of value or what we thought might not be in the best, um, you know, situation for our mm -hmm. clients or for our guests, we wouldn't, you know, we would change restaurants if we needed to or anything along those lines. So yeah, we're definitely going to make those, those changes as needed. Now at this stage, is there any change in your recommendation on how travel advisors should work with you and your clients or is it the same? I mean, I would say it's the same. I mean, what I, I would think about is there is going to be a demand 
um, in high volume when we sort of come out of this, when there is more certainty. Um, I think we're already seeing that now. We're having very strong weak you know, up from year over year. So really sort of looking at 2019 versus 2021 because 20s sort of ended up becoming obviously a wash. Um, so it's really hard to, to drive trends off of what was basically a non-travel year for the most part. Um, but no, I would say be ready, be ready to, you know, have your guests make their bookings. And I would say make them early because we don't know how long the you know, having less people on a coach will uh, continue, but I'm pretty confident that we'll see that continue into next year. Mask wearing, I think we're going to see continue for, for quite some time, but I think that's just going to become a bit of a norm to some extent. And people are just, you know, they're used to it. You put it on when you need to and you take it off when you don't. And, um, you know, I think that you're going to see that across, you know, all countries and all destinations for um, the short, mid and potentially long term future just until we figure it out. So travel advisors who are new to Colette, um, how can they start working with you? Look, if they're new to Colette, hopefully they've been hearing a lot of the positive and great feedback that we've been hearing. Um, you know, we have travel partners who have been telling us that we have stood out bar none to some of the other tour companies, which is great. In, in the sense, look, we all... I want to see everyone succeed, you know, whether they're competitors, whether this is the travel industry and we need to stay tight and we need to stay, um, you know, we need to keep each other afloat. Um, you know, that is the industry that we're in. Um, you know, it is good to hear that we have been less of a headache for our travel partners. And um, with that, it in turn makes them look really it helps their guests trust them because they chose Colette and we made it easy for them to be able to get their money back. Um, th this isn't a suspension of tours. This is a, you know, a pandemic and, you know, we can twist words and change things, but in the end, you know, we just have to be ready to operate in the best way that we can when we're coming out of this and we can do it in much higher volume. Um, you know, and I would also say the fact that we've been out there, we have, been able to understand what works best, how to operate in a COVID environment. And uh, we're, we've been doing it successfully. Like I said, we have people who came back. Um, we ha our excellence rating on our surveys from passengers passengers from July onward is 94% excellent experience overall. So that's telling you what our guests are feeling and saying based on travel in a COVID scenario. Um, so it is possible people can have a good time. And so to me, those numbers, um, you know, speak volumes of how travelers, if they really want to be out there, how they're feeling. And so it's not jeopardizing an overall excellent experience. Um, and we've been out there doing it. So that should also just add an extra level of trust that we're not on day one. We have had tours go out July, August, September, and October. So um, yeah, you can book it with confidence. Now you're a 102 year old company. Mm -hmm. What happened in 1918? Any, any stories about the pandemic, the Spanish flu then? You know, no, we actually, and that's actually interesting if you think about it, but I think, you know, people were already probably a bit more socially distanced. You didn't have sort of, it was a very different world in which you would have lived in. You didn't sort of go sit in a Starbucks and, uh, you know, <laughs> be surrounded by so many people all the time. But uh, no, actually we haven't, we don't have many stories for how it would have operated, but we still had our tour. Through. We still had our tour to Florida that year. So yeah, definitely. I guess traveling on a jitney all the way down there wasn't affected too too much. That's great. Uh, anyway, I I wish you luck. I can't wait till we're all partying like it's 1920. I, know. <laughs> I would love that. Yes, it's definitely. I'm with you. We're looking forward to to remembering this as a wow, what a year, um, and what a story, and what a what a time that we all went through as an industry and as a world. Um, you couldn't have anything connect you more and also not want to be connected to it either. So <laughs> <laughs> the irony of that, Jackie, thank you for talking to us. Thanks so much. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report. <laughs>